we call the action, which is to do with the mass of the particle and the time and the distance. Uh, and, and you, so you basically calculate these little uh, quantities. If I told you that military propulsion is no longer just science fiction, how would you react? Is it not possible to envision a time when spacecraft will be able to fly at the speed of light or even faster? Even faster than the speed of light travel, an entirely new method has been developed by scientists. The wonderful improvements this will bring about in the future will astound you. Swifter than both sound and light. An important turning point in aircraft development was the Concorde supersonic passenger airliner, which took just 3.5 hours to go from Paris to New York. Concorde is long gone. The only aircraft that can travel at supersonic speeds now are fighter fighters. The next stage of human space travel has long since been crossed. The vast distances in the universe cannot be traversed without spacecraft that travel faster than light. Otherwise, it would take us millennia to reach the next star system. For a very long time, it appeared that nothing formed of matter, including people, could go faster than light. What caused that to happen? It's actually quite easy. Nothing in space can move faster than light, according to Einstein's general and special relativity equations. Even at such speed, matter cannot move since energy needs and dynamics equations would no longer be relevant. To answer this puzzle, scientists really had to use their brains. It looks like we may be able to build a spacecraft that can travel faster than light and bend time and space to our whim. The warp drive is a real spacecraft acceleration mechanism that causes stuff to vanish in time and space and reappear anywhere in the universe. If you enjoy science fiction space movies, you are already familiar with this mechanism. Travel to the furthest regions of space would be possible, as enormous distances are crossed in a relatively short amount of time. Even while writers like the renowned Gene Roddenberry and John W. Campbell popularize the idea purely for amusement, science only became aware of it in the 1990s, circumventing Einstein in the process. According to Einstein's theory of special relativity, material things having a non-zero rest mass are incapable of traveling at the speed of light. Energy and mass are interchangeable. This indicates that an unlimited amount of kinetic energy is needed for an object to travel at the speed of light. One way to tackle the problem is to fold or bend the space surrounding the object. To warp is to bend or deform. Rather than using energy to create thrust, the force is used to deform the space. This creates a sort of fold that the spaceship may then slip through with minimal effort. This idea had no bearing on Einstein's theories, which are now the accepted scientific theories of cosmology and physics. There are still two issues, producing the energy needed to fold space and practicality, Miguel Alcubier a Mexican physicist, at least theoretically, solved the problem in 1994. He created a framework that would permit faster-than-light travel while adhering to the constraints imposed by the laws of physics using Einstein's general theory of relativity. Practically speaking, relativity dictates that when objects move faster and faster, they get heavier and heavier. Photons are among the few particles that are able to travel at these extremely high speeds, despite having almost no mass. Miguel Alcubierre created a drive bearing his name. The idea is straightforward and simple enough for even lay people to grasp. Motion that is viewed by observers outside the distorted zone as occurring faster than light is made possible by a purely local expansion of the space-time continuum behind the spacecraft and a contraction in front of it. On the other hand, those inside the distortion would see, let's say, nothing or very little. Maybe they would hear the well-known story of light, watch the stars flash by, or feel a little tremble. A warped spacecraft might travel enormous distances in a matter of seconds, 
effectively traveling faster than the speed of light, the Alcubierre drive can theoretically burn a tremendous amount of energy, contracting and twisting the space-time continuum in front of it, forming a bubble that folds space at the same time. As this bubble is a physical inertial system, there would be no actual acceleration experienced by the occupants. But within the bubble, everything would comply with the laws of physics. Nothing would be outside. Nevertheless, matter could travel through space at a speed greater than that of light, using a clever trick the universe may offer, one that is unknown. This speed and thrust would differ from those of vehicles, aircraft, or space missions. One common error made by humans is to consider the cosmos to be a single space. However, space-time is a flat sheet that is warped by any mass object according to relativity. We sense gravity as a distortion of the space-time continuum, which is caused by mass influence and is present throughout the cosmos. This is the origin of the space effect as we know it. Indeed, when you sit in front of your computer or smartphone right now, you are creating gravity and somewhat warping space-time. Naturally, in this situation, the intriguing question of whether a person may intentionally compress the space in front of them and push through a temporal fold to emerge somewhere else in space also emerges. This is feasible in theory, but in practice, it would take a large amount of force to distort the space by a multiple greater than what is caused by your weight alone. The bubble is created by the Alcubierre drive, which is required to use a propellant to go beyond the laws of physics on the outside. This is precisely the point at which we still have some issues, since, at the moment, we are unable to generate enough power using hydrogen, diesel, gasoline, or methane. In fact, to gather the energy using the methods currently available, we would require energy equal to Jupiter's mass. Negative matter, however, has been identified as a workaround for this issue in the interim. This strange material is intended to be the long-awaited solution because it theoretically has a negative mass or energy density. But if we look a little closer, we have to see that there is one more little issue. Negative matter is not only difficult to imagine, but it has also not been found yet. Although it is not verified, its presence is suspected. What better way to create a drive than using something that might not even exist? Furthermore, how would we go about gathering or producing enough of this kind of stuff to power a spacecraft, even if we were able to detect it? There is always a solution to an issue. When it comes to warp drive, researchers are never at ease because, well, we need it. Before we go into the newest and most brilliant concept of a nearly absolutely viable warp drive, let's review the current state of human technology. Hold on tight, because everyone who dreams of traveling faster than the speed of light may now experience pain. The speed of light on our fastest spaceship is a universal physical constant of about 300,000 kilometers per s. At maximum warp speed, the fictitious Enterprise could transport its heroes 9,000 times faster than the speed of light across space and to new adventures. Our space probes are currently our fastest spacecraft. Even while probes are very light and compact, they yet require a lot of thrust to get to places like Venus, Saturn, and Jupiter. The highest speed of the Juno spacecraft, which circled Jupiter, from 1995 to 2003 was 74 kilometers per s, or just 0.02 times the speed of light. Voyager 1 is currently more than 21 billion kilometers from Earth and took nearly 35 years to exit the solar system. The Parker Solar Probe, which may go up to 191 kilometers per s, close to the Sun, is the fastest spacecraft yet constructed by humans. These figures should have made it very evident to you that human technology does not extend very far into space. Even short distances provide significant problems to us. 
On a cosmic scale, we may say that we only need to step in front of the door. In order for scientific probes to travel any distance at all, while using a respectable amount of energy, they typically employ complex acceleration maneuvers on the gravitational fields of planets. Certain probes use Jupiter as an assist for acceleration, or they first complete two orbits around Earth, followed by Venus. Over numerous years, they slowly approach their destinations in the solar system on seemingly endless orbits. Imagine that your friend from the Proxima Centauri system extends a coffee invitation to you and that your starship would need to make numerous orbits around some planets before it could leave the solar system altogether. And with the technologies at our disposal, it's unlikely that anyone would reach the cosmic neighbor in time, not even close, because as things stand right now, a visit would take more than 100,000 years to arrange. The truth is that we don't progress in the cosmos in this way. And new technologies, actual workable technologies, must emerge if we are to become a species that colonizes space at some point in the future. The field of warp technology continues to advance constantly. A novel solution to warp drive was recently introduced by Dr. Eric Lent of the University of Gingen. It avoids the conventional issue of requiring negative matter and extraordinarily high energy levels. In his research, Dr. Lent explains how physical qualities that are already in place and can be used to accelerate objects to the speed of light. The secret is to use what are known as solons, or warp bubbles, as they are more commonly called. This technique just requires positive energy densities that are known beforehand. However, a great deal of research is still needed to determine the technological viability of this technique. As Dresden residents continued to consider this, the next momentous announcement was made. A true warp bubble has been found by NASA scientist Dr. Harold Sonny White. Dr. White was actually working on something else totally, the Casimir cavity, which is observed between two metal plates that are incredibly near to each other, even though he was already investigating the viability of a warp drive at NASA. There are microscopic structures or natural warp bubbles inside this hole. Additional study in this field is now being funded by the Defense Advanced Study Projects Agency, DARPA. All that's left to do is replicate these little structures elegantly and on a massive scale, and we may be able to create the first real warp drive and explore interstellar space.